Our favorite 12-3 extension cord broke. We'll show you what we're going to do about it. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. We walked in the box store the other day and extension cords are running over a dollar a foot for a good one. I know you can get cheaper ones uh, for a cheaper price, but a 12-3 extension cord, a hundred footer was over a hundred bucks. Now that's not chump change anymore. And same thing going down to a 25 and 50 footer, you're probably actually gonna pay a little more per foot because you're gonna get that savings as you go bigger. Anyway, a good extension cord is expensive nowadays and they're not easy to find either. So this yellow jacket extension cord has served an excellent several years here at the shop. You see it's even got a, a few uh, blemishes, if you will. Uh, but anyway, what we've got now is one of these outlets is dead. One of them is real sketchy and works half the time. You have to kind of turn the cord or whatever. And the other one works most of the time. Anyway, it's time to not do away with this, but actually fix it. And we're going to make the perfect, the best, extension cord you could ever want. Well, that's what we think anyway. Uh, we've done this to uh, several of our extension cords and thought, you know what? Why don't we show you how to do it? And by the way, before we get started, we spent a grand total of $16 at the big box store. You could probably even buy some stuff online to save some money or even rummage through uh, your electrical stuff and you might find some outlets and some other stuff to save you some money. But this is not an expensive fix. So we're going to start with our existing extension cord. I doubt you're going to go out and buy brand new cord to make an extension cord. That probably even still won't be feasible. However, we're going to use what we have right here. We're going to have a couple of screwdrivers, a straight slot, a Phillips head, some lineman's pliers, uh, also some wire cutters or some side cutters, and then some wire strippers and a razor knife is going to come in very handy. We need a dual gang box. You don't have to use a dual gang box. Uh, you can use a single gang if you want to. We're gonna go with a double gang so that we can have four different outlets and a stamp box gonna have some rounded edges. And then the cover, uh, we're gonna use a dual gang cover uh, with your standard outlets. But this is where you could differ and use a, uh, um, you know, one that's a GFCI and one that's a standard outlet, but we're not worried about GFCI right now. Uh, so we're just going to use conventional outlets that are 15 amp as well. You're probably going to need some extra wire, whether you want to use stranded or solid core. Uh, we're just using standard Romex solid core in the box because we don't see an issue with it. Uh, sometimes when you're combining stranded with a solid core, you can have a potential for loose connections. But since these are going to be sealed in the box and really shouldn't be a problem, I don't have a problem running solid core uh, between the two outlets with the stranded uh, coming in from the cord. Now, if that bothers you, obviously you can use all stranded if you want to. Something I would definitely recommend would be stepping up from buying the cheapest outlets. Uh, don't buy those 75 cent outlets. Go ahead and step it up and, you know, buy a $3 outlet like we have here. Uh, that's just going to last a lot longer. It's going to connect better. Uh, it's just a better quality outlet and much more um, suited for an environment like a shop and being used over and over. So again, those uh, cheapy outlets, stay away from them, especially the ones you plug in from the back uh, and get the ones that actually, you know, you, you either screw in or you clamp in with the screws uh, and don't get the ones that you just insert the wire in the back and it grabs. I also didn't see the need for stepping up to a 20 amp plug since the, uh, the plug going into the wall is not a 20 amp plug. Uh, this is one we won't be using to run 20 amp tools, even though we have a few in the shop. Now, another uh, item that I would recommend stepping up and buying is, is a, uh, something that literally has some cord restraint or a cord restraint where, like in this, we have a rubber grommet that's inserted in there. And as you tighten or clamp down, it's going to grab onto that wire and uh, provide not only some lateral pull uh, resistance, but also pull side to side. It's going to prevent, you know, uh, cord, a cord from breaking internally as well as even the insulation breaking down on it. Now, there are some better cord restraints out there online versus what we found in the box store. Uh, some that have a, a longer kind of spring-like effect. Uh, and as well as you're going to need some wire nuts and some electrical tape to kind of finish things out. 
So first thing we're going to do is go ahead and cut the end off of our wire. Now since we had a small abrasion here on the wire, we're going to try to see if we can't uh, make use of it and, uh, and not have to cut it here, but maybe just cut it right behind the plug and be able to just uh, unshield it or take the insulation off here. Now taking a look here, it looks like we've actually cut into the insulation of the wire as well. So we're going to have to go ahead and cut that off. But we are going to go ahead and cut this wire right behind uh, the outlet. And the reason we're going to do that is that, uh, yeah, make sure it's not plugged in. Uh, so the reason we're doing this is because we don't want this laying around or somebody look in and go, oh, look, uh, here's a, here's an an outlet I can wire onto my extension cord and make it work because we already know this is a failed uh, uh, point of failure. So we're going to throw that away with no pigtail on it. And now we're going to come back here and, uh, and try to trim this back. So we're going to go ahead and uh, cut this right there, that abrasion. We unshielded it and then did confirm that there were some cuts there in the insulation of each of the wires. So we're going to go ahead and cut that back. And now we're going to uh, trim off this insulation about, give us about four to six inches. Now, I think the best way to do this is uh, to actually bend this wire and take a real sharp razor blade and you really don't have to cut. You just kind of press in just a bit and that insulation will split uh, without you having to get into the you know potential of actually harming the wires inside. Uh, so again, you just kind of roll it all around from your existing cut and you, you just really got to barely press with a new blade and it just uh, separates and you can pull the shielding off and now we can uh, cut all our, our internal um, uh, trimmings there and cut that away and get ready to put this through the strain relief. Now this should be enough stick out to actually uh, make it through our, our uh, strain relief as well as get into our box and make it to the outlet. Yeah, that's going to be plenty. Now we got to knock out that center hole and uh, insert our strain relief. In this case, we're going to use that center hole because uh, you've got typically in a box uh, three quarter inch knockouts and uh, half inch knockouts. Ours is utilizing a half inch knockout. So we're going to knock out that center which again, you can turn the box depending on where you want to insert these wires, but that's where we want it. So some lineman's pliers and the screwdriver knocks that loose and then grab it with the lineman's pliers and pull out that little puck and get it out of the way. So now we can take our strain relief, take off the nut and uh, temporarily kind of put that in there and start the nut. But we'll pull that out for right now and let's get that put on the wire first. So we'll pull off the retaining nut, pull out the rubber grommet, and then confirm that this is going to work. And a little bit of a tight fit. So we're going to put a little bit of lube on there and then uh, put that nut on first. And by the way, this only goes one way. There's like a shoulder in there um, in the, uh, where the rubber grommet actually goes into the strain relief, into that, that metal housing. Um, so a little bit of lube gets that grommet to fit on, and then this will fit down in the shoulder. And as the nut tightens up, it's going to tighten up on that rubber grommet and tighten up on the cord. So we'll just kind of get this finger tight here, get it snugged up a little bit with our fingers. And now we're ready to actually insert that in the box. So put the nut on and again, get that finger tight and just kind of set that into place. And uh, we'll also grab our screwdriver here and just kind of give it a couple of racks there with our hand or with the lineman's pliers as well, just snug that up really well. Now when these outlets go on, they don't actually screw into the box like your typical outlet in a home or a building. Uh, they actually screw uh, like commercial uh, type of system in a shop. They actually screw to the, to the faceplate. Um, but with your outlets, when you get them, they don't screw directly on the faceplate because of the uh, of the little washers and the tabs that are connected to the outlet. So you, this is very simple to do. Basically, you just grab your lineman's pliers or set of pliers and you can take the ears off, uh, but you really don't even have to do that. And by the way, you can use those for washers uh, to uh, set the offset, but we're going to grab it and just remove the entire tab at once. So you don't have to take each tab off or each ear off. You can just grab the whole tab and bend that back and forth just carefully. Uh, and lineman's pliers work best for this. That's just what they're meant for. And so easily take those off, off of each one. And now they're ready to set 
on that actual faceplate and be screwed in. Now, these are little nuts here uh, that are used for putting when the screws are inserted through the faceplate and um, to the outlet. So you can break those off for use later. And now we can take our outlets and we can set them in place to make sure the bolts, the holes line up and screws line up and so forth. Now we've got the screws in there, but they're held on with a little piece of plastic. Just grab the lineman's pliers and yank them out. You don't have to unscrew them. Uh, just grab them, pull them out, and uh, you'll be good to go here. Definitely don't throw the screws away. You're, you're going to need those, but those little plastic pieces, you don't need them. And again, we're breaking off the tabs here. And now we're ready for these outlets to go on the faceplate. So make sure that they sit in there nicely and everything lines up and both of them are going to be good to go. Uh, but before we screw them into there, we're going to go ahead and wire things up. Uh, first thing we're going to start with is actually... Uh, wiring the two outlets together before we actually put it in the box and wire it to the uh, to the extension cord itself. So we're going to go ahead and trim a little bit of the uh, solid core Romex wires off and get them ready for combining these two outlets. And there's usually a strip gauge on the back of these outlets that show you how far to strip the wire. And sure enough, right there, um, it shows that I think it's usually probably a three quarters of an inch or something like that. Uh, so here's where we're just uh, stripping that wire and uh, comparing it to the gauge to make sure that we've got it right on and we're good to go. So now we'll take our screwdriver and these are the easy to insert. You don't have to uh, create a hook or anything. These are just going to get clamped into place. Like I said, it's worth buying those higher dollar, dollar outlets to make it easier on yourself as well. Uh, so we go on the white wire to the silver screws and that's going to go from uh, again from the silver screw to the silver screw and on the black wires they're going to they're going to go to the gold screws so uh so the gold screw on one side to the gold screw on the other side that's going to be your common or your black wire and uh again stripping those correctly and now getting those tightened down so now we've got those two outlets tied together with our common and our neutral wires now all we need to do is uh, basically attach the lines coming in uh, as well as connect uh, the ground that's going to not only join the, the two grounds on the outlets but also combine to the wire coming in, the ground coming in, as well as the box. Now we're going to do something a little bit different here. We're going to cut this ground wire uh, extra long. Now you could definitely use some uh, exposed copper wiring here, but we're just going to go ahead and use this uh, green insulated uh, for our ground. We're going to strip the end extra long and uh, and put a hook on it and then uh, we can screw it to the outlet or get ready to. Uh, but then we're going to come down a ways um, and uh, strip basically uh, a center section out here. We're actually going to do two, but anyway, so putting two um, uh, cuts here in the insulation and then we'll come back with our razor knife here in a second and strip that out of there and you'll see what we're doing here in just one moment so now we've got that bare and we're going to do another section here and get that insulation stripped off with our razor knife and now we can basically bend that around the ground screw so you can see we're going to attach the end uh, to one of the outlets and squeeze that tight and then we're going to take our screwdriver and tighten that up and then bring that over that first uh, section that's uh, with the insulation strip we're going to bend that around the other ground screw on the other outlet and again clamp that down and uh, get it good and tight with the screw and so this is our basically a continuous ground is kind of the uh, the idea here Take our straight slot, tighten this down just a bit more. And now you see we basically got a pigtail sticking off uh, with a bare midsection that's going to go around the screw in the box. And then the pigtail sticking out will just wire tie to the ground that's coming in. So our ground in the wire will be grounded to the outlets as well as grounded to the box. So here we're bending it around the screw in the box. And again, using our needle nose to just kind of clamp that a little bit tighter and to make sure that we get the maximum amount um, of surface area and then we're tightening that screw down to clamp that down good and tight and once we have that tight we want to flip the box over and you want to make sure that the screw ground screw is not sticking out 
beyond the box itself. You see, you got a, a dent, indention there, a little hill on the inside. Uh, but that ground screw, I did have to trim off a little bit to make sure it was short enough that it didn't stick beyond the bottom of the box and it's not going to scratch something or you know, drag across the concrete all the time. And now our ground is all connected except for the wire tie. So we can uh, take our wire strippers and we can strip back these wires and uh, get those uh, wire tied together. So we'll strip our solid core or our Romex wire and then we'll strip our, our stranded. Both these are 12 gauge and then we'll take a wire nut and get these together. Make sure that twist is nice and uh, nice and tight. And then this is where sometimes you can have some faulty connections when you're connecting a, a solid strand or a solid core wire to a stranded core. Uh, but just make sure you're getting your wire nut nice and tight. Make sure the wires are even and one doesn't push down. And then I'm going to come back with a lineman's pliers and just firm it up uh, with a few more turns and get those things twisted up nice and good. And then I'm going to grab each wire and to make sure that one doesn't pull out over the other, make sure those are actually nice and tight, uh, not only together, but also uh, the wire nuts got them concealed. And I'm going to tuck that away, push it off to the side of the box. And now we're ready to connect our common and our neutral wires to the outlet. So we'll go ahead and strip those and get those twisted up and as we said before the black is going to go to the gold screw and so we're going to get that good and tight make sure that's clamped into place give it a good tug make sure we're not getting any movement and then we can move over to the white wire get that stripped and uh, nice and tight and then get that clamped in as well so you can see the silver headed screws and I'm going to take our screwdriver and get those clamped in. So now we've got all of our wires tied in. Give them kind of a tug. Make sure they're not any, none of them are loose. And we'll kind of mock it up, get it into place, make sure our wires are bent out of place and that it's uh, not sitting too proud or sitting too high. And as you can uh, tell here, these, this plate has a raised area, so it doesn't have to sit down flush. It's going to sit raised a bit, but this ground wire is getting in the way a little bit. I'm going to push it off to the side, and now that's going to sit down uh, nice and pretty down there in the box. So we're good to go now. But before uh, we do anything, we're going to go ahead and be extra careful on this. Since we're using a metal box, and we're going to take some electrical tape and we're going to wrap each one of the outlets so that those metal screws don't touch one another, don't touch the box. Uh, so just a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, help with insulation from that electrical tape. And now we can connect our outlets to the actual um, face of the outlet cover. And we do that with the screws that we originally pulled out and those little tabs that are the actual uh, nuts for those screws. Make sure you get all those started first before you tighten all of them. So once we get them all started, uh, then we can come back and uh, run them all in and get them tightened up. And now all we have to do is make sure that the wires are out of place. And now we can take the two screws that connect the face and get those in there nice and tight. And then we can come back and make sure those two are tight as well as again, make sure the other four are tight and even tighten up on our compression fitting there, our strain relief. So taking our crescent wrench and tightening it up on that rubber grommet that's actually grabbing on uh, to that actual insulation of that wire, providing lateral uh, resistance as well as side-to-side -side resistance as well. So there you have it. We've got our perfect extension cord, uh, and uh, it's going to work for years to come. As well as, the thing is about this is, is you have a failure or something, it's as simple as replacing a, an outlet. Um, and really shouldn't have any problems unless something actually cuts your wire. So shouldn't have any issues for years to come. So this is also going to provide you basically an extra plug. Uh, if you had a triple, now you've got a, a four outlet box. Um, so it's giving you additional place to plug in. You're going to have some good strain relief uh, from the pressure on that cord. I highly recommend you go into higher quality plugs to make sure that they last for a long time and give you good connectivity. So that's it. No rocket science there. Uh, just some good wiring of the outlets, uh, buying some high quality outlets or at least higher quality outlets. Don't go cheap, cheap on those. And then getting a decent box, I again would recommend a stamp box, not a welded or a screwed together box with sharp edges. This just 
makes it a lot nicer, as well as buying a plate where the, uh, where the outlet's actually screwed to the top of the plate. It'll give you a little more room, and it's just a lot better look, if you ask me. Um, highly recommend the strain relief on this. Uh, like, here's a little pigtail we made years and years ago, and we just used a regular, you know, conduit connector there, which just kind of clamps onto that wire. Uh, it just doesn't do as well with the, uh, with the strain relief and the cord bending back and forth. We haven't had any problems with this, but still, this is a better connection, a softer connection, if you will, with probably more surface area that actually hold on to that wire. And I would even, I'll, I'll include a description with a longer strain relief, kind of like a, a spring out here on the end or like a long rubber boot that will provide a little more uh, resistance to that wire as you pull against it and uh, pull forward as well as side to side on it also. There you have it. Hey, listen, extension cords are getting more and more expensive. As we know, all our metals, our coppers, uh, brass, all of that is getting more and more expensive. So cords are something that we don't just throw away anymore. Now, maybe your company requires you to throw it away, but we're going to actually make sure we don't have any abrasions or any rub throughs or any cuts or anything and actually uh, put a good end on it and we should be good to go. If on the other end, if on the male end, you needed an end there as well, you can buy high quality um, uh, ends for about 10 bucks. I think I've seen them as, as cheap as six or eight bucks, but typically a high quality uh, end of the, of the cord is gonna run you eight to $10 on those, but you can get those as well. Ours was absolutely still good on this one, so we didn't have to replace that. Uh, as I mentioned, extension cords are, are above a buck a foot now, especially even getting in your higher quality stuff like a 12.3, which again, highly recommend you running a better extension cord. That's gonna help your tools survive longer. And yes, we're still plugging things in today. Uh, everything hasn't gone cordless yet. You still have to plug some things in. So, hey, check it out. Let us know what you think. Also, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. If you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.